J E S S E D A I N O. Did I get it right? Yes. Okay. So he's a co owner of Recess Coffee, and I will let him take it away. All right, guys. So, um, my business partner, Adam Williams, my business partner and I started Recess. Well, we actually bought Recess about 10 years ago. It was a business for about seven months, kind of failing business. Um, we bought it fairly cheap and we bought it as a hobby business at first. Um, we both had other career goals, other focuses in our lives. So we bought Recess, we took it seriously, but we didn't think it was gonna become a career. Um, for the first, I think, three to four years, it was just Adam and myself, we had no employees. We would take a day off every other week and uh, it was pretty rough. So a after about six months to a year of being in business, we realized that we really needed to either buckle down, take it super seriously, or walk away from it. So we buckled down, we took it seriously, and um, every year it's grown since. So we used to do all the roasting. That photo in the middle right there, that's our original, well, that's our second roaster we ever had. Our original roaster was a Ronco rotisserie oven. But that is our old roaster. It's from the early 1900s. We did all the roasting and baking inside of our Harvard Place location. I don't know if you guys have been there or not yet, but it's about 1,000 square feet. The kitchen's pretty small. So we had a pretty big roaster back there, um, you know, a big oven, and Adam would do all the baking, I would do all the roasting while serving customers. Uh, that became unsustainable, I mean, probably from day one, but it really became unsustainable after a couple years of doing it. We hired our first set of employees, um, which was really odd. It was really odd to leave recess with somebody other than Adam there. Uh, that took a long time to get used to. But the second we did that, we were able to grow a lot. Um, I was really able to focus on the wholesale part of the, the company, supplying coffee to other restaurants and stores, and Adam was just able to focus on baking more and better. So that, that place that was just up there, there we go. This place, when we moved out of Harvard Place, we moved our production to an old diner. Uh, I don't remember how big it was, but it wasn't that big. It was about 1,000 square feet, the whole place. But it, that also totally changed the business around. But that also took Adam and I out of the business. We were spending our time at this production facility. So our first employee ever, Graham, he kind of evolved into becoming our manager, our first manager, which was great at first. He was a super hardworking guy. We put him on salary. He worked all the time. He did the schedule. But it took Adam and I out of the business, which also made the business grow quite a bit. And then we remodeled. We remodeled Harvard Place a handful of times. It's a really old house. It's kind of hard to remodel if we are closed for a day. We lose a ton of money, obviously, so constantly remodeling. Photos. And this is the state it's in right now. We're uh, currently in the process of doing another remodel. Right now we're gonna start in March. We're gonna start in spring break. We're gonna have to close for a few days for that. We're getting a new floor and redoing all the walls. And hopefully in winter we're gonna redo the kitchen. But what the business has evolved into, right now we have about 50 employees, maybe a little less than 50 right now. We'll have 50 in the summer for sure. Um, I learned early on, and it was harder for Adam to learn to delegate. Um, the more I delegate and get people to do specific jobs that they're actually really good at, the better it is for the company. Graham was a terrible manager. He was a great manager when we had like four or five employees. He was a terrible manager when we had like 30 employees. He just, he just couldn't handle it. He did everything himself. So we took him out of management, and now he's our head roaster, and he's doing a fantastic job there. Um, for a minute, we were kind of in limbo with management. We had a couple assistant managers that were kind of taking over the duties of general manager, and it did not work well. We have a great general manager right now. She's doing a fantastic job. Under here, we have three assistant managers that are kind of the boots on the ground in the retail shops more. Our GM is in the retail shops maybe a day, day and a half a week. Uh, the assistant managers are only in the retail shops. We meet with them once a week to just kind of discuss things, but they're always in the retail shops. Under them, we have shift leads. So when an AM isn't there, a shift lead is I will, not always there, but 90% of the time they're there. The shift leads can count the money, do refunds, deal with customer issues, things like that. And then under them, we have the baristas. Under the baristas, we have the general floor staff. It took a while for us to figure out this structure, but it works fantastic. Um, Adam and I only communicate with the shift leads rarely, but mostly just the GM, which is great. And um, 
you know, Adam and I go into the shops every day, but we never work in the shops, so we have to really trust these people to do what we, uh, to carry out our vision of what recess is. And we think they're doing a really good job. Any questions? That was pretty quick. Yeah. Do you have an overall goal for recess? No. Okay. How many uh, locations do you guys have? We have two retail locations and then a third production facility. So we moved out of that old diner into a really big production facility that has a bunch of offices in it and a huge back area for the roasting and baking. Yeah. How would you describe your management style? Mine personally? Yeah. Uh, I like to delegate things. I like to really work with somebody closely and figure out what they're really good at and what they're not good at and then try to put them in the specific job that they'll be really good at Leave them alone unless they need anything else. Yeah. Um, what was the worst mistake or biggest failure you had in this whole process? We made a lot of mistakes. None of them were too gigantic. Um, the biggest strange thing that we did is in year one, the guy we bought the business from didn't know anything about business, but we were in our early 20s. We never went to college. We didn't know anything about business either. He told us to pay sales tax in cash at the state building downtown. So we went to the state building downtown with a bag full of cash to try to pay our sales tax. Luckily, one of the employees is a friend of ours, and he kind of pulled us aside back before anybody heard us trying to do it, which is the wrong way to do it, by the way. Yeah. That's what he does. <laughs> that, that was the biggest one. Yep. What's your uh, biggest management success that I would say? I would say in the last year, hiring Roxanne as our general manager. Um, what Adam and I want to do, we want to grow um, ourselves as a business in a way, and we want to do, we want to expand what we do. We want to own Harvard Place, like the building. We want to own Boss Road, that's a production facility. And then we'd like to buy some retail spaces, maybe like just expand our business ventures. And Roxanne can definitely manage all those under us. And she's done a fantastic job. And she spent a lot more time, uh, like when she runs payroll, she runs, she gives Adam and I a payroll report that shows the percent of um, what we're paying in wages compared to the percent of sales for each location. We have each business kind of separated out, so we technically have three different businesses. We have three different sets of books. Um, so she's making sure all the money on that side of the business is in check. It makes sense. Yep. Do you have a typical customer? Mm, uh, it's hard to say. I'm not there anymore. When I was there, I would say college students, grad students mostly at Harvard. And then it seems like downtown young professionals. Yep. What do you perceive to be your company's greatest weakness going into this year? And how are you going to effectively address that? Uh, that's a hard question. Um, we just hired a new accounting firm, and like I said, we have the new GM, so we feel more confident now than we've ever felt. And every year we've had recess, we've grown by 30 to 100 percent easily, and we've done the same from last year. So I don't know. Um, we're spending a lot of money on the remodel. We don't own that building, so we're sinking a lot of money into somebody else's building. That's always a risk, I guess. Um, yeah. Yep. How would you describe the culture of your organization? We try to have an open form. Any employee could, you know, every employee has my cell phone, my email. They know to contact me if there's a problem. Um, we try to have a relaxed yet professional culture, especially in the offices too. Um, we try to be really open and collaborative. You know, also with the management structure, <coughs> for the end of the business that Adam and I watch over, I mean, we have a food manager that manages all the food under her. She has a, a head baker. And then, I mean, I have production managers for the roasting and stuff like that. So we, we have really specific job, anything that can be a job at recess, there is a person doing that job right now. So you'd say that all the jobs there are pretty like personalized to the person's like, um, All the jobs at Boss Road are, yeah. 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 
and like we've definitely had to move some people around. Like we like to try to find where people are strong, and instead of firing them if they're not doing a good job in one spot, try to find a good fit for them before we just you know, before it doesn't work out, which has worked out really well. Yep. Have you ever had to deal with like a specifically problematic employee? Oh yeah, a lot of them. Yeah. And, what, and how did that? Uh, how did you handle it? Uh, usually it's not too big of a deal. I mean, we had an issue not long ago with an employee that was harassing other employees. So, you know, like when you, hi when you have somebody employed that works full-time equivalent for more than six months, you have to have a lot of reason to fire them or they can collect unemployment. So we keep really good records on all our employees anytime they're late, even if they're one of our favorite employees, it doesn't matter. You have to, you know, anything they break in the policy, you have to write them up for just in case you do have to end up firing them. But every now and then, we've had to fire a manager once. Uh, that was, you know, I don't know, not too rough, I guess. You just, you gotta do it if you have to do it. Sounds like you don't, you don't like pick favorites, really, so is, it, is that like a kind of a big attribute to your management style? Kind of, I mean, I feel like I'm close with everybody that, everybody and the management, I guess, that works for recess. And I do have really, like Graham's one of my best friends ever. I do have friends at work, but I would fire anybody if I have to fire anybody. I mean, it's just how it is. The company is a lot more than just admin and I. We're responsible for, you know, 46 paychecks a week. So, you know, we have to watch out for that first. Yep. Do you ever set goals for your employees or yourself? Sometimes. Um, not too often, so my main focus right now, I manage all the money and I do all the wholesale still. Um, so I have a couple of people under me that have been traveling getting wholesale accounts, so what we do is we figure out how much money it costs to go on a certain trip. We just went to Buffalo, I think two days ago. How much money that costs in labor, in product giving out, all that kind of stuff. What the return is, how many accounts we actually got out of, how many accounts we visited, how long it takes to make that money back. Using this information, probably by this time next year, I'm gonna be able to come up with a really good plan on how to pay salesmen like that, certain bonuses, what percent to kind of give them, because right now I'm just, I'm paying them hourly, and if they get an account, maybe I'll give them 100 bucks or something, but with all this information, um, I could better, I don't know, I, I, could, I could think of something better than that. That's more fair for the employees, more fair for the business. But other than, other than that, not really. Adam and I have a lot of goals for ourselves, like we wanted to um, build a new cold brew tank last year. We were making cold brew out of 55 gallon buckets and now we built a custom 300 uh, gallon tank that cost us $11,000. We had to think about that for about a year and plan it and Adam had to actually design it and engineer it. So Adam and I have goals like that, but nothing, nothing smaller than those kind of things. Okay. What would be like the top priority that you give to your employees? What are you talking about like, most important? Um, so Adam and I don't deal with the retail employees really kind of at all. Roxanne's really good about that, but her main focus is customer service, speed of service, and quality, kind of all three equally, um, which speed of service has always been a struggle. It takes a long time to make a quality espresso-based drink, but people don't want to wait eight minutes if there's two people in front of them kind of thing for one of those. So. That's always been a tough one, and we do have a head barista that has an assistant under her who kind of, every six months they retrain everybody and they kind of, if we have a par problem employee that's maybe a little slow, they'll watch over that. Mm -hmm. um, for me with the wholesale, it's getting the orders out as fast as humanly possible, getting them correct 100% of the time, and having an open dialogue with all the managers at all the accounts that I have. So if they have any questions about quality or a new product or something like that, they know they can get a hold of me directly. Yep. How do you evaluate employees? Um, I don't evaluate anybody. Roxanne and the AMs, they do um, retail employee evaluations, I think, every four months. Um, Adam and I evaluate Roxanne every six months, and Roxanne evaluates all the AMs, I think, every four months as well. Um, she has a really, really good setup. She's super professional about it. She has a, a whole list of questions and stuff she asks them, and she bases uh, the raises and stuff off those evaluations. Yep. Sounds like you've uh, like alleviated a lot of the um, 
like responsibilities to Roxanne. Would you say that's like a vital part of growing, like you and um, uh, not Graham, Adam, Jesse, Adam. Yeah. Is that like is, is that important for you and uh, Adam to grow? Yeah, that was huge. Yeah. And I saw that years and years and years ago, and Adam didn't see that as much as I did. I mean, he was still physically baking until about a year ago, maybe, almost everything that came into the shops. With Roxanne doing all the retail oversight, it leaves Adam and I free to do things like the Harvard remodel, build that cold brew tank like we were going to. Um, we're taking a trip out to Seattle in a couple months to go to a big coffee fest. It leaves us free to do those kind of things. Um, if I get a random call from somebody that's heard about us that wants to use our product down in New York City or something, I could, I could take it. I'm not busy doing something else. So it, it has been huge in our growth. Yep. What makes um, leading, I guess, like your overall staff difficult? Uh, for the retail people, a lot of them are young. A lot of them maybe have never had a job or barely had a job. And they think recess is the cool, fun place to work, which is great. But then when they get there, they have to do dishes, and there's a line of people out the door, and it's, it's stressful. Uh, a lot of them kind of sink. So that, that is not a stress for me personally, but I know it's a huge stress for whoever's, whoever's dealing with that. Is there anything that makes it easier? Makes what easier? Like leading, the, like overall staff? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Not for me, yeah. I mean, <coughs> the people I'm actually physically in charge of are like four people. That's okay. I just I don't do anything else. Yep. How do you um, communicate with your staff? And like, like, do you have like weekly staff meetings or like, uh, how does that work? So we have a weekly management meeting where it's Adam and myself, um, the general manager, the AMs, and then some of the production people, like Les is kind of the boss road manager, and Tree, she's the food manager. We have weekly meetings like that. It take about an hour, hour and a half. And then we have monthly, those same meetings, but with all the uh, shift leads too, monthly. And um, we do have a private recess crew Facebook page that everybody kind of communicates. That's kind of more for fun. Um, and then we send out MailChimp, weekly MailChimp. So anything that's pertinent from that weekly meeting that happens on Wednesday, that all the retail staff need to know about, it gets MailChimp out on Friday. And like I said, Adam and I are in both shops at least once a day, sometimes twice a day, every like seven days a week. So we know all of our employees. They know us and you know, we, we talk to them that way too. What would you say, um, I asked you what, what was your biggest like mistake or failure? What would, what would be your biggest like accomplishment? Uh, the biggest accomplishment to me personally would be the first time we ever broke a million dollars in sales in a year. That was that was huge for us. We never thought we would come close to that. Uh, when we first started, I don't remember what we did in sales the first year, but I think it was like thirty or forty grand. I mean, it was grim. And uh, I don't know. That that was a huge one. And also, hiring this accounting firm has been huge for us too. Uh, they're doing all our bookkeeping. Uh, they changed our corporation to an S Corp, so Adam and I can actually get physical paychecks right now. Before we were just taking profit draws, maybe every month or something. So that that's been a big, uh, big accomplishment to us. Yeah. So like, what's a typical like work day like for you now? Uh, for me, so I go to both shops really, really early in the morning, grab the money, figure out if they need change, figure out what they need for change, grab the change. Um, I go to the bank, and then I go to the office, check all my emails, see if I have orders. If I have orders, make the invoices for them, and, and that's it. That's, that's my day. I don't know. Then I hang out at the office for a little bit with Adam, talk to Roxanne a little bit, and go home. It would be very easy for me to delegate the little tasks I have left to somebody else. But I like being there every day, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. So in terms of networking, what do you think has been the biggest factor helping you guys succeed? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Um, we do some networking. We used to do a lot more when we were new, and it never really helped us in the way we thought it would. Um, we did a lot of events. We spent a lot of money doing a lot of events. Um, 
it's never really done much for us. It's never really gained us accounts. It definitely did get our name out there a little bit, but I think just being in business for as long as we have, it's done so much more than networking. We've wasted a lot of money networking, honestly. Yep. Is there anyone that you still look for uh, or look to for advice or any sort of guidance or do you just come in and just do an ad and go out? Mostly just Adam and myself, but I did take a class through the SB, SBA um, last year, business class. And in that class, we had CEO mentoring groups. So it was me, the guy that owns Mario and Salvo, the guy that owns Speeches Candy, and the lady that owns Kathy's Corner. And we still meet quite often and share our experiences because we're all in different places in our businesses. And all of those guys have had their businesses lo much longer than me, so they have some... Uh, good advice and some good mistakes to watch out for. But yeah, mostly just adding that stuff. And we do talk to a lot of other really much more successful business owners than ourselves, which inspire us more than anything. And kind of, I guess a follow up, and then in talking to those CEOs, uh, do you find that your management style within your industry is different from other industries or even within your company, different than other companies? Uh, well, from those guys, incredibly different. So the guy that owns speeches, just makes chocolate. He doesn't. He has like three employees. Mario just makes pizza. Like they do what Adam and I used to do years ago, which is strange to me because they've had their businesses for right. twenty years or something. But it's also made it so they can't grow the way we've been able to grow. Like if if I tell them like, hey, I'm going to go talk at SU for a couple hours. Like, Man, how how can you do that? How can you get away from the roaster? It's like, well, I, I don't roast. That's that's how I can do it. So. I think it helps them in that sense too to see that there's a different way to run a business than just physically working in your business instead of working on your business. I think that's a big difference. I see too many people work in their business than work on it. Yep. When you use it. When you used to like oversee more employees, did you find that like you would have to change the management style like depending on each employee or was it just an overall? Sometimes, but not too much. <coughs> Some people, I mean, really you should speak nicely to all your employees. They're making you money when it comes down to it, and they're doing a really good job usually. But some employees, I mean, just simple things like saying please, thank you, instead of just barking orders at people. I mean, that's, I, I wouldn't change it. I mean, that's just what we do, I guess. But, so I guess no would be, would be the answer to that. But if you just treat everybody with respect, and if they do a great job, reward them. If they don't, either fire them or leave them where they are kind of thing, and that's all. Did you say that you treating your employees with respect and kind of makes them feel more inclined to help benefit you? I think so. I mean, if they like the company they work for and like what the company is and about, I think they'll do a better job inherently if they care. What skills do you find that you need as a manager to succeed, and then what kind of skills do you look for when I am people like Roxanne and Jim Dino? Uh, being able to handle a lot of stress, a lot of ups and downs. Um, for Adam and I, I mean, we're the last to get paid. You know, we don't know what our pay is going to be any year we've ever owned recess. Everybody that works for us <coughs> knows exactly what they get paid every week. It's a, a totally different kind of thing. Um, for Roxanne, she's salaried as well. Um, abstract thinking, hard working, understanding numbers, because that's extremely important, understanding basic math, um, and delegation, knowing when to delegate and when to not delegate. And I don't mean like, the bathroom is gross, go clean the bathroom. You know, like you should be able to do any job, any specific job that there is, and you should do it sometimes too, but knowing when working 60 hours a week isn't worth it and making sure someone else can kind of pick something up and give them some responsibility sometimes. Yep. Do you think you like your personal values or ethics play a lot into like your management? I think so. I mean, maybe not necessarily the management, but Adam and I, we always had that um, philosophy with recess that we wanted to be a place that we enjoy hanging out in as a shop we enjoy coming to work every day. So we try to continue that feeling 
into um, our work every day and we try to make sure that the people working for us, it can be stressful sometimes at Boss Road, obviously when something doesn't go right or whatever, but we try to make it a place that people want to come every day. Yep. What's like one of the best lessons that you've learned like from your mistakes? I mean, d delegation, like I say, but well, yes, I do know. Not firing Graham from management earlier. We left him on as GM probably a year to a year and a half longer than we should have because he was one of our best friends mm -hmm. because we didn't know any different. You know, like we just, we didn't know, I guess. So that was a huge mistake. And we would never make that mistake again. You said the uh, like delegator delegation a lot, like throughout this uh, interview. Could you go into depth more about that? Like, how how do you utilize? Or I know how you utilize. Like, how like important is the uh, delegation process for this? So it's hugely important. So what I've learned about delegation is doing it slower than faster. Sometimes certain jobs you can just throw anybody into and see if they sink or swim, and it's not a big deal. But so my specific job, taking all the orders. Um, it's, it's fairly complex. We have about 70 to 80 wholesale accounts right now. Some of them have different prices because some of them are older and they're grandfathered in. So there's a lot of information to know. Nobody orders the same way. I'm slowly teaching one of our guys, Pat, how to do it because I'm going to be gone for two weeks, so somebody has to when I'm gone. And I'm doing it the right way. I'm taking my time, really making sure he understands it. That's hugely important, doing, doing everything the right way. I mean, with Adam baking, it took him a long time to hire an assistant, and then with the assistant, they were just filling the gaps that Adam wasn't doing. That wasn't delegation at all. That was just hiring a second employee. So knowing what responsibilities there are for the company and figuring out who can fill them the right way and making them fill them, just giving them those responsibilities. Um, it can be a really hard thing for employers to do because the business is it's yours. You know, when you guys go into recess, I really care. You know, I really care if you get a bad coffee. Somebody that works for us that's not there at that moment, they don't care at all. You know, it's not it's not their thing. So you have to really trust the people that work for you. And that's kind of a tough thing. Um, was it part of your personality to like distribute or like share work? Because like, I know my dad personally does business too and he likes to do a lot of things on himself because he doesn't have that lack of trust with his employees. But like, it was that innate in you to like easily trust and like delegate work? At first, no, not at all. It took me, I mean, right when we first hired our first employee, I, I remember the day I left work early actually because one of my employees was there, I had nothing to do, mm -hmm. and she said, go home, and I really didn't want to. I, rem I remember that vividly actually. Um, after that, Maybe within a few, maybe six months within that time, I realized how important it was and how much more I could do for the company as a whole if I did that. So it wasn't innate. Um, my father owns a business too, and he works hard every day. You know, you know, like I don't know, he, he doesn't delegate really either. It's I don't I don't know. It was a hard thing to do, but I, I really knew it was the right thing to do. So and I've been really lucky. I, we've only you know had a few duds that we've delegated stuff to, and I really really messed up, and not too many. Yep. Have you noticed like any speci like specific customer trends over the past few years? No, I mean our customer base seems pretty standard over the, at least the last four or five years. Um, we've just been getting busier and busier, which is a really good thing. Yep. How like how innovative do you see like your your business? I don't know, coffee's a tough thing because there are new advancements constantly. Um, a lot of them are fairly hokey or gimmicky, I guess would be a better word. So we pay attention to them all and we do the ones that we think are actually beneficial to the customer or to the company. Um, we try to stay fairly innovative, but there's, mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of advancements in coffee all the time that won't be here in two years. Do you find, uh, do you feel that you've like reached as far, um, I guess, away from, from the work that you could do? Like like the, the ground line work, do you feel that there's more delegation that could come as you guys continue to grow? 
Well, so right now, um, I, I feel I'm as far from the retail as I possibly can be. And Adam and I are working on separating ourselves from the company of Recess a little bit more gradually over the next year or two. And we're trying to do the same with Roxanne. So if we do expand our business or open more businesses, we have somebody under us that can kind of manage the bigger picture. Um, and I know that's going to take a really long time, so we're, we're doing that over the course of a year or two, I think. So. And I would like to be able to leave for two weeks and know everything will be fine, because I don't think I can right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, if there were any recommendations for a student of management, what would they be? Not to open a business, right? To just manage businesses? Uh, yeah, I guess so, yeah. Just anything in the management aspect of business, I guess. Uh, learn as much accounting as humanly possible. Because <laughs> that is the most, I mean, obviously dealing with people is huge. Knowing how to deal with employees, knowing when to let people go, uh, knowing when it's worth retraining them is obviously huge. But understanding how much money a company truly needs to take in to just, fun I mean, we have to bring in I think this month, we just set our budget a little bit ago, I think it's $4,200 a day to just stay afloat, to, to just be a company still. I mean, it takes a ridiculous amount of money to just exist. And knowing what that takes, understanding what percent of expenses you should be spending on, so like your food costs should be 30, 35% of the income from them. You, you know, understanding those kind of things, which aren't huge to understand, but just knowing them and paying attention to them. Even if it's not your job, it's still important as a manager, I think, to know how the company's doing because you could have a bad owner that's not paying attention to that stuff and uh, things could be going downhill fast and if you're the manager, you're probably the highest paid person there and that's your career. So it's, it's just knowing and understanding that stuff is huge, I think. Especially if you're doing, um, doing scheduling, understanding how to schedule people to not have a lack of people to affect service, but to be in that percentile to where the company can still generate enough money to function. Do you guys spend like a significant amount on like marketing or anything like that? No, um, almost nothing. We do some Facebook ads. We, we spent a lot of money on advertising in the old days and it's been Bus. With Facebook and Instagram, mm -hmm. you could do a lot for free. Um, we even advertised with SU a few times, and that never helped us. business get a job no I don't know uh, that was given to us and that was actually good advice in the old days but um, I will say this if you guys are to open a business we have a couple friends they open a business called the sweet practice they just opened their first retail spot awesome spot are you, you've been there it's yeah. awesome right they're not doing good at all uh, they left jobs where they were making 50 60 grand each a year salary awesome super cushy jobs one of them had a sleep room like a nap room and stuff so and now they're not making a cent um, and I told them, because I sat down for a few hours to try to help them out, and I said, be ready a year or two, before, you're not gonna get paid for a year or two at least, like you're just, it's impossible. And I went over all the numbers and they didn't understand, any, everything I was just telling you about expenses, like they have no experience with that at all. So, I don't know, just really know what you're getting into. Even if you're just gonna manage somebody else's business, know as much about the numbers as you can. Try to, try to have a dialogue with the owner and. A, a lot of owners really care, which is great, but a lot of owners also make a ton of money and, and don't care as much, and just, just be mindful of that kind of stuff, that's all. Just know you're gonna, whatever you manage, you're probably gonna really work hard for your money, too. Has anyone in here been to Recess yet? Yeah. So tell Jesse about your experience there, 
So it was actually when we sent like a couple of workers for like the honors college reception, and um, one of I, like, like one of the espresso machines like actually broke, but like your employees like handled it like very well though. Like they're still like really nice to us, and like like I felt so bad because they had to apologize like probably like five million times. But like I like because I used to work in the food industry, so like I know how hard it is to like deal with that type of stuff. But like they took it so well. Uh, Harvard Place, you know where Westcott Street is? Westcott Road, there you go. Yeah, and there's, there's a three-way stop there, we're right around that corner. Oh, okay. All right, thanks for coming in, Jesse. Yeah, of course. Sorry it was so hard to get a hold of you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you.